what if Piotr Jan never threw the knee? So I couldn't think of a video for today and I'm trying to think of something that's somewhat relevant, maybe something that involves maybe Sean O'Malley, maybe Aljamain Sterling, as we're in the UFC 292 fight week and we're on Aljamain Sterling's like fourth title defense at this point. And it's crazy, it always surprises people, at least surprises me a bit to see how long Aljamain Sterling's been champion. And the idea came across my mind of like a what if, maybe try to do a what if video. And I'm like, what if Piotr Jan never landed that knee against Aljamain Sterling in his first ever title defense after he defeated Jose Aldo and Piotr Jan was the new face, the young face of the Bantamweight division. And that just got me thinking, what if he never threw the knee? And I just want to talk about this a bit. I literally don't have any notes for this video. I'm literally just going to free think about what if the knee never happened the circumstances, how they would affect many fighters in their careers, and particularly Aljamain Sterling and Piotr Jan, obviously the people who fought that night. And if you guys want some context or you don't really know what happened, basically Piotr Jan was the new UFC Bantamweight champion after he defeated Jose Aldo, and this was his first title defense against Aljamain Sterling. Now you guys probably know this whole situation, but Piotr Jan was pretty much controlling that fight. I wouldn't say he dominated the entire fight because Aljo looked all right early, trying to put a high pace on Piotr Jan. But even when Aljo was maybe winning a round, or you know, some people think he won the second round, the first round's close, but he gets dropped in it. A lot of people, I think, including me, I just felt watching the fight live, like, oh, Piotr Jan's just got this. I knew Aljo's pace wouldn't be enough to keep up and even when Jan was losing moments of the fight or even around it just felt like he was going to end up winning the fight as the fight went on Piotr Jan truly started to dominate and in round four after Aljamain Sterling was kind of playing this game where he's on his knees it's a controversial subject in MMA obviously right now in the UFC grounded knees and Piotr Jan throws a grounded a knee to a grounded opponent and it lands big time on Aljamain Sterling now there's a bunch of conversations you can have about if the knee was actually that damaging if Aljo was truly acting in that situation to get the title obviously a bunch of people have different opinions about that that's not what this video is about all we know for sure is that 100% this costed Pure Jan's title he loses it by DQ and now Aljamain Sterling is the new Bantamweight champion in very weird circumstances. Now, first, I want to focus on how this would have affected Aljamain Sterling if Piotr Jan never threw this knee. Now, if he never threw this knee, I think it's all clear to everyone. I don't like to be the guy who says, oh, this would have happened because you never know in the sport, literally. I say that all the time. Like, it's wild. It's an insane sport. But it truly, like, 100% just felt like Aljo was done in that, in that moment in the fourth round. Felt like he was giving, you know, his last pushes... He just felt gassed out. It felt like Piotr Jan was just controlling it calm. Piotr Jan looked great in that fight, and I think it wouldn't have went Aljo's way in rounds four or five if the fight continued. And it was starting to look worse for Aljo. So I'd say if the knee was never thrown, Aljo being Sterling would lose to Piotr Jan in his title shot. And where would this put Aljo from then on? I think for Aljamain Sterling, it would just be back to fighting contenders. I don't think he'd move up to featherweight yet. Obviously, let's talk about him moving up to featherweight now after he's had, you know, a, after he's sustained, you know, a good bantamweight title reign. But I don't think he would have moved up then. I think he wanted to kind of win the title and catapult himself to move up to for maybe, you know, a top fighter at featherweight or maybe even the champion to go for double champ status. I think that was a goal for Aljo. So I don't think he moves up, even though the weight cut's, you know, a bit difficult. I think he fights some more Bantamweight contenders, and that's pretty much the situation Aljamain Sterling would have been in. Maybe he would have fought a guy like Dominic Cruz, who was coming off a win against Casey Kenny on that same event. Maybe he would have fought Marlon Marais in the rematch. Aljo just would have went back to fighting contenders, which is crazy, because who knows if Aljamain Sterling ever reaches the pinnacle of the sport, which is the UFC Championship. We never know. Um, I think there's a small chance. He'd have to put together probably a three-fight win streak or a four-fight win streak to get that shot again at Piotr Jan, at Bantamweight, even if he's picking up good wins because it was dominant. Even though Aljo had moments, a lot of people think he won a round in the fight, Piotr Jan was dominating. I don't think a majority of the fan base would want to see the rematch, even when he was booked You know, in real life. We're not in this hypothetical situation to fight Jan the second time. People weren't even interested. That's how good people thought Piotr Jan was, how dominant that fight would be. Aljo would have went back to fighting contenders, would have had to earn that title shot back. Who knows if he ever gets it? Who knows if Marab gets there faster than he does? Now on to Piotr Jan, who I think it affects so much as well. 
I think the way he's perceived in MMA fans' eyes, like a lot of people don't even look at Piotr Jan as like one of the best in the sport anymore, which to me is a bit crazy. I do think he's really good, even though he's on the slide right now. It's been close fights. It's been decent showcases for himself, even against Marab, but what would have happened with Piotr Jan if he would have defended the title against Aljamain Sterling in a dominant performance? We know how good Aljo is. So if he never threw that knee, he would have won. Likely a decision. I don't think he stops Aljamain Sterling but he would have won in his first title defense against Aljamain Sterling. Probably would have went on to fight Corey Sanhagen or maybe a guy like TJ Dillashaw who defeated Corey Sanhagen around that time in July of 2021. So I think Piotr Jan, I like his matchup against TJ Dillashaw, but you never really know. Um, TJ would have a chance in that fight, but with TJ's injury problems and how he looked against Aljo um, in their fight, maybe Piotr Jan wins there. Maybe Piotr Jan, if he never threw that knee, and this is how a lot of people think about Piotr Jan, is he's one of the best, especially in that moment. That knee ruined his career, right? We hear that all the time. The knee ruined his career. I don't think that, but it ruined definitely the perfect kind of thing he was building. Now it's a bit more of a mess. Now he has to kind of piece it all back together. But Piotrion, I think, would have had at least three or four title defenses or something like that. I do think he would have eventually defeated Corey Sanhagen if he would have ever reached that title. A bunch of guys in the division, Rob Font, Marlon Vera, Sean O'Malley, which would have been interesting if they would have given Sean O'Malley that title shot. It gave Sean O'Malley the chance to fight the number one ranked Piotr Jan because Piotr Jan didn't have a fight in the Bantamweight rankings at the time. And Sean O'Malley was coming off that mess against Pedro Munoz where it was a no contest. And they were like, you know what, let's find out about Sean O'Malley and put him up against the number one guy in a fun fight in Abu Dhabi. But I refuse to believe after a no contest against Pedro Munoz or whatever, you know, O'Malley wasn't fighting top guys at the time. I refuse to believe that they give him a title shot. It's not a shot at the number one contender. It's a title shot. Way different circumstance. Way different thing. So I don't think he ends up fighting O'Malley. And if you look at the Bantamweight division at the time, Jose Aldo would have had to do a lot to earn that rematch. And I think eventually he would have had to beat, you know, who he did beat, which was Marlon Vera, Pedro Munoz, Rob Font. And I think he would have had to get through probably one more, which he had to do, which he had to do anyway to get a shot at Aljamain Sterling, which would probably be Jose Aldo versus Marab. And I do think the way that that fight went, the knee does not affect that situation. Marab would beat Jose Aldo and would probably lead to Marab versus Jan. Obviously, if that's, you know, meaning Jose Aldo never had to fight Aljo, maybe Aljo defeats Aldo. It would be interesting to definitely see who gets to the title shot first after Aljo lost to Jan. Aljo or Marab, obviously, they're two friends, two buddies. They don't want to fight each other. Would they have been forced to fight each other in some sort of number one contender circumstance? Would they not agree? Would they both be passed on? Would Piotrion have more title defenses? Or would Piotrion lose the title to, you know, someone else? Or, you know, TJ Dillashaw could defeat Piotrion, you never know. But I think it probably would have somehow all ended up to Marab versus Jan. We saw how that fight went. Marab won. So maybe the, all of this, say Marab never goes on to win the Bantamweight Championship in real life. If the knee was never thrown, it could have been a way better opportunity for Marab to 100% be champion because he wouldn't have Aljo there at the top blocking his opportunity. And obviously he's fine with it because he's close friends with Aljamain Sterling, but it's definitely probably annoying uh, because he does want to be champion likely and if Jan never threw the knee, the path would be a lot clearer for Marab to go and achieve the UFC Bantamweight Championship. And I think he would have somehow ended up fighting Jan. I don't think the knee affects it. A lot of people talk about how Piotr Jan was injured um, for the Marab fight. I do think he looked a bit off, but I think Marab's also just a beast. He is a machine. And um, he was able to kind of dominate Piotr Jan with that weird style, even though Jan stuffed like 524 takedowns. It doesn't matter. Marab defeated Piotr Jan somewhat dominantly. And I think that probably would have happened again. But I do think the way that we look at Piotr Jan as a champion wouldn't be like a, a random champion. A lot of people look at him as just like a guy who won the title and that was it. He had so much potential. If he never threw that knee, I mean, we're talking about three, maybe four title defenses, maybe at least two title defenses or something. I mean, we know he would have had one if he never threw the knee. Obviously, you never know in the sport, but I don't see Aljo sneaking a submission in that fight at all. I think he would have dominated the rest of the fight against Aljo in his first title defense. I think the rain would have been a lot greater for Piotrion. He would have been growing in confidence. It's interesting, you know, people kind of diagnose the end of the career of someone. And when he threw that knee, people had bad feelings about it, especially after he beat Corey Sanhagen. He gets that opportunity again to kind of avenge the knee. Some people were like, ah, I'm feeling like Aljo's going to somehow win and this all gets ruined and the knee costs him everything. And he ends up losing a split decision to Aljamain Sterling. 
And it seems like it just messed with the whole career of Piotr Jan. Now, I'm not saying it was in his head and he started to fall for it and stuff and think, oh, man, my career's over. I'm not saying that. But I do think the knee obviously just affected the trajectory of his career. And it's clear. It's noticeable. This is a guy who's picking up so many wins. And then you just see that knee get thrown, that DQ loss. Now we're starting to see some L's. I do think Piotr Jan can bounce back, though. He is a beast. But it's so interesting to think about how that one knee in that one moment in that one fight affected so much of so many's careers we're talking about Marab, we're talking about jose aldo we're talking about aljamain sterling we're talking about piotr jan who was the bantamweight champion who was seemingly a dominant champion to be i mean a lot of people thought piotr jan was like the new fedor the new dominant russian champion in mma even i was thinking that i thought he'd win the rematch against aljo and this is a common topic in mma because it's so clear what the impact of that knee was and um, I feel like in the moment, it was such a casual thing. I remember in the moment, I was like, whoa, I wasn't thinking of it like that. I was just like, oh, that was an illegal knee. What is Piotr Jan doing? And then I was like, is Aljamain acting here? And then I was like, I feel bad for Aljo. And then Aljo wins the title. And then I'm just like, this is stupid. Then I'm like, I want to see the rematch. And then Aljo pulls out of the rematch. It ends up being Piotr Jan versus Corey Sanhagen. That gets us thinking even more high of Piotr Jan after that performance. We know how good Piotr Jan is. That knee definitely affected his career. It's so interesting to think about what if that knee never landed? What are your guys' thoughts on this topic? What if the knee never landed? Piotr Jan versus Aljamain Sterling at UFC 259. The circumstances, how it would affect a bunch of fighters' careers after. I definitely think Piotr Jan is a great fighter and can bounce back and win the title. But again, it's just interesting how it affected everyone's careers. What are your guys' thoughts on this topic? What do you think would have happened in that situation if the knee was never thrown? what happens to all these fighters, and thanks for watching this video.